Hi, and welcome back to my three-part mini-series where I'm taking a look at the free version of Dorico's iPad app. If you haven't seen part one, that's where we started with our blank project and we did some basic note input. In this part two, we're gonna look at more advanced note input with rests and triplets and things like that. And again, please consider getting yourself a Bluetooth MIDI keyboard. It'll really help with the note input. And again, just for hanging out with me, I have a free music theory survival guide. Just go to joshring.com slash free. It'll really help with your music creation. So let's dive in with the free version of Dorico's iPad app. All right, so you're ready to start actually writing your music. You can select where you want to start writing. Uh, and then you could, again, you could click on this plus sign next to the treble clef and you could start writing. And again, it pops up this what's called the carrot, this big vertical line will show you where you're gonna start actually entering in your music. But just to show you, another way uh, that's actually much faster is if you just double click, you're gonna start writing music right away. Uh, and again, that carrot shows you where you're gonna start entering the music. Sometimes when you double click, maybe you, you selected it uh, a little too far over and you're gonna be on the wrong spot. So you can use these left and right arrows and that'll be forward and back to advance the carrot. And you can see it's advancing by eighth notes, right? Because the big lines are the beats and the little lines are then the eighth notes. So here we have what's called the rhythm grid. So this ruler with the eighth note next to it, and we can select what we want that rhythm grid to be. So if we wanted more options, we could change it to 16th notes. So now when we advance it, it's going to advance by 16th notes, which is helpful if we wanted to put a, a lot of 16th somewhere. So let's say I wanted a 16th there, so I could change my rhythm and place a 16th right on the end of one, things like that. Well, another option, if we're gonna deal with music that didn't have much eighth notes, we could select instead the quarter note. And you can see now when we advance our carrot, the rhythm grid only shows the beats, only the quarter note values. So it's helpful to change this based on what type of music you are writing. I'll just go back to eighth notes for now. So again, I can change my rhythm. So let's say we wanted a half note and then some eighth notes. Just changing it as we go. All right, something like that. And if we made a mistake, we could hit this back button at any point and it'll just back up the music as we need it to. Let's say we wanted to enter in a rest for some reason. We could select the value of the rest and we could hit this little arrow that advances the carrot as much as the rhythmic value is. Uh, so we'd advance it now by a half note and we can start writing it in a note. Let's say instead we wanted only an eighth rest. We could advance the carrot by an eighth rest and that'll enter in an eighth rest when we start writing again. The other option is to actually use the rest button over here so that when you hit a, a note, it'll enter in a rest. It does the same thing as advancing the carrot. Uh, so personally, I think it's just easier to use this button instead of having to turn rests on and off. If you wanted to move the carrot around, you could again double click where you want the carrots to be instead of having to hit the left and right arrows constantly. Uh, if you had multiple staves, you could use these up and down arrows to move between the staves. So I'll enter in some more music. If you do hit the wrong note, one option is to hit the back button, the delete button. Another option we haven't talked about yet is over here we have some note moving options. And again, if you hold down this top part, you can move it where you need to, uh, which is quite helpful if you wanted to get it out of the way. Uh, so options to start is we could move some notes around if we wanna move them by step. We have these up and down arrows, we'll move a note by step for us. If we wanted to move it by a half step, that's what this sharpened flat will do. So we could have some sharps and flats in there if we wanted to move a note by chromatic step. If we wanted to move it by an octave for some reason, same kind of thing. We can move it up or down the octave as needed. Or if we wanted to move a note, it's not in the right spot, so we can move the note forward and back as needed. Or if we wanted to make a note longer, we could do that as well. All right, with these ruler options, making a note longer and shorter. And again, it'll advance the note by whatever rhythm grid you selected. So if you had quarter notes, every time you hit it, it'll lengthen it by a quarter note. If you had selected, say, 16th notes, it would lengthen or shorten by 16th notes, like it is doing here, kind of taking 16th notes off and now taking, adding 16th notes back on. All right, so another reason to use that rhythm grid. All right, so that's actually my preferred way to add ties or dots to a note. Uh, but let's say you wanted to do it another way. So we wanted to enter our dot a quarter. So we go over down to quarter first. Then on the left, we could add the dot to it and then we'd enter our note, right? So that's one way to do it. Let me just show you another way. If I go to the start of the next measure, the way I normally do it is because I don't have to keep going over to this dot. I'll just enter my note first and then I can lengthen it by an eighth note. 
we wanted to put in ties. Let's say we have two quarter notes. So I have my two quarter notes. I select the first one, same kind of thing down here. I can now tie them together and it automatically changes it into a half note, right? Since two quarters would equal a half note. Let's say I have the same kind of thing. I have two Gs. This would be a nice way to, again, uh, tie over the bar line. Uh, but, but again, Dorco is very intuitive. So if you had tried to put in that quarter tied to quarter, you could just put in a half note and it would do the same thing, right? So it automatically ties over the bar line for you. If we wanted triplets, we would first select, if we wanted eighth note triplets, we would select the eighth note first, then go over here to triplets, and we could start writing in our triplet, right? And it'll look, it's very intuitive. It'll keep doing triplets until we turn the triplet off. Or if instead we wanted quarter note to triplet, we would select the quarter note first, then we would do the triplet, and it would keep the triplet going. Thanks again, I hope this has been helpful with note input. Again, the MIDI keyboard is a lifesaver. It really helps, check it out in the description below. And stick around for part three, we're gonna take a look at adding the musical elements like dynamics and articulations, how to make it look really good and share it. Don't forget your free music theory survival guide, joshring.com slash free. Thanks, have a great day.